Hi there guys, welcome to Tom Voyage. On today's video, we're gonna be cooking this. This is a bar style pizza cooked on the Uni Karoo 16. So bar style pizza is traditionally found in North America. It's the kind of thing that you would slice up into squares and eat whilst watching a game at the bar. Now traditionally these pizzas are cooked with oil in a pan which means it gives it this really crispy crust. The cheese goes right to the edge and goes nice and crispy as you can see on the base here as well. So I've cooked these many times in my home oven but I've never tried them on the Uni before so today we're giving it a go on the Uni Karoo 16. So first of all here's the dough recipe that I used to make this pizza. So first we're going to get the bowl of our electric stand mixer. Then we add 280 grams of lukewarm water. Next, we're going to add 0.8 grams of yeast. Just pop that in there and let that hydrate. So we're going to mix it round in the water just to help it dissolve. So next we take our nine grams of olive oil and add it to the water. And again, mix this round to incorporate it. Next, we add our 12 grams of fine sea salt. Mix it again until the salt has fully dissolved. And then finally to our mixture, we're going to measure out and add 465 grams of all purpose flour. Next, we're going to put our bowl on the stand mixer and mix all the ingredients together. So after a few minutes, your dough should be in a bowl like this. Now to prove, you can either leave it in this bowl, tightly wrapped with cellophane, or you can transfer it to a lightly oiled tub with a tight fitting lid. Now we need to leave the dough at room temperature for six hours for the first proof. So it's been six hours and now our dough looks like this. So it should have doubled in size. So now it's time to remove it from the tub and to divide it up. So we need to lightly flour our work surface and remove our dough from the tub. Sometimes I like to use one of these spatulas. So next we want to divide our dough up into four equal pieces, weighing about 190 grams each. Once you've weighed out your dough, you can ball them up into nice smooth balls. For the second fermentation, we're going to put the balls into a dough box like this one. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a baking sheet with tightly wrapped in cling film. So we're going to leave these for the cold proof for 24 hours. You can leave them up to 72 hours, but don't leave them any longer than that. Twenty four hours later and your dough should look something like this. Now you need to leave it about 60 to 90 minutes before we cook. That's because we need the dough at room temperature to make it stretch more easily. Next we need to take a 12 inch pizza pan like this one with a nice deep edge. I'm going to add just a drop of oil to the bottom and spread that around. You need to make sure you get the edges of the pan as well otherwise the dough will stick and it'll be very hard to remove. Then take your dough and with a little bit of flour on top, we're going to press it into a rough circle shape until it's about half an inch thick. So add a little bit more flour to help it stop sticking and you can rotate the dough and flip it as you see necessary. Now because we want this base to be thin, we're next going to use a rolling pin to get it to the size of our pan. If it starts to resist and contract, feel free to leave it for five or 10 minutes and then come back to it. You can pick the dough up like this to shake off any excess flour and drape it over the knuckles and lay it back down on your work surface. Sometimes I put the pan over the top like this just to make sure we're there or thereabouts with the size.
Once the dough is in the pan, you can push it to the edges using your fingers because we want to make sure that the whole base is covered in the pan. If it doesn't quite reach, don't worry, just leave it for five or 10 minutes and then come back to it. So now we're going to add some sauce. Now, as this is a bar style pizza, we're going to spread our sauce right to the edges. Next, we're going to add our cheese and we're going to do the same with the cheese. We're going to spread it right the way to the edges so that it gets nice and crispy on the sides of the pan. And now for toppings today, we're going to go with a traditional pepperoni pizza. And now we're ready for the oven. So we're going to be cooking this pizza today on the Unicaroo 16, as you can see behind me. Now, unlike normally where you would have this oven running at about 500 degrees centigrade on the stone, today we're running half that, we're running at about 260. This pizza is going to take longer to cook, so therefore we need a lower temperature and we'll cook it for longer, probably somewhere around eight minutes. After that, we're going to remove it from the oven, take it out of this pan and pop it directly onto a pizza peel. We'll pop it back in the oven, cook it for a couple more minutes just to really brown that base and make it nice and crispy. So it's always handy to have a pizza peel with some semolina or cornmeal on it ready to go and a spatula to help you lift it out the pan. So in it goes and we're gonna keep it as far away from the flame as possible, so as near to the front of the oven. If you find your oven's getting a little bit too hot, just turn the flame completely off for a couple of minutes and let it sit there at a steady temperature. You can always turn it back on if that heat starts to drop too low. So a couple of minutes in, remember to turn your pan. We're gonna turn this 180 degrees because it's getting really hot on that side now. So it's actually cooked quicker than expected. In only six minutes, our pizza now looks like this. So it's time to take it out of the pan and back in the oven to do the final browning. So this is where we need our spatula. I'll keep one oven glove on actually. And we're gonna just cut around the edge and release it from the edge of the pan. Okay, so let's get our peel ready. And this is the moment of truth. Hopefully it will come out nicely onto there. So as you can see, it looks good on the top, but the bottom still needs a little bit more color. So we've put the flame really high on the uni to get that stone nice and hot. So once our pizza's back in, it's gonna give this crust a nice golden brown color. We've just checked our stone temperature. It's about 400 degrees. So we're gonna launch our pizza back on, but we don't really want the top to cook anymore. So as we launch that pizza in, I'm gonna immediately turn our flames down to the lowest setting. So all that heat from the stone is now going into the base, which is gonna give us a nice brown crust. Okay, so it's only been probably 90 seconds longer on there. And we actually ended up turning the flame completely off because the residual heat in the stone was doing a fine job of cooking the base and we didn't want to overcook the top. But as you can see, it's finished the base lovely. We've got a nice brown color on there. So let's cut this up and give it a taste. Now, because this is a bar style pizza, tradition serves that we cut it into a square form. I'm not actually sure why this is. So maybe if you know why, you could tell me in the comments section below. Man, this really, really smells amazing. I can't wait to try it. So, Let's see what it tastes like. So the crust now is nice and brown on the bottom. That's lovely. Mmm. To be honest, it could have maybe done a little bit longer to get it really crispy, but taste-wise, that's really, really good. I'm very happy with that result. And next I'm gonna cook a couple more with different toppings and see how they go. But for a first attempt on cooking bar pizza on the uni, I think it's great. For the second attempt, we cooked a chicken and green pepper pizza, this time in a 15 inch pizza pan with a 270 gram dough bowl. We increased the oven temperature to 350 degrees centigrade and cooked it for a similar amount of time.
This time the base came out more well done, crispier and I think gave a better finish. Thanks very much guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe. Or if you have any questions, comments or tips, please use the comment section below to get in touch. Thanks very much for watching this video and we'll see you next time for more pizza making videos.